Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps you're visiting with us and you've tuned in and we trust that you enjoy what you hear and invite you to come back and be with us again. We want to begin with prayer this morning. Our nation uh, desperately needs prayer and our president needs prayer. We want to continue to pray for our community, that God would continue to open up doors of opportunity to share this great message. And we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. You may just have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together now and make that known unto him. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the power of your spirit. God, I pray for our nation that is in the throes of confusion. I pray for our good president that you will navigate his steps. God, I pray for our community that you will open up doors of opportunity to share this great message. And I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. I pray that the windows of heaven open and pour out provision, protection, and your presence. We ask this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. Praise God. Yesterday, we started out by talking about choice and the power of choice. And the power of choice is a incredibly important factor in our lives. And then we talked about the choices that God has made and how that those implications of God's choices have made certain determinations and shaped and, and formed things the way they are. I want to continue to talk about that a little bit. Yesterday, we talked about how that God chose uh, to make man in his image and in his likeness. God created the world according to uh, his plan and his desires. But also, God made some determinations by allowing there to be a fallen angel. In fact, this fallen angel appears to have been present at the time of creation. And we certainly find this fallen angel in the Garden of Eden. The thing that is put to the test in the Garden of Eden comes down to one thing, choices. Choices that are made and choices that have everlasting implications. But before we explore that, that will probably uh, be part of what we talk about in part three. I want to continue to talk about God's choices. In quick review, as I've already mentioned, God created everything after uh, his own will. He created man in his likeness. He created layer upon layer. Uh, day after day, there was a different layer of this incredible creation that God put into place. And then he placed man in the garden. But God's choices didn't end there. The Bible even tells us that some of these choices were determined before or from the foundations of the world. I wanna draw us to Ephesians chapter one and verse number four, where the apostle says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now, several weeks ago, we talked about predestination and how that predestination, which is actually a biblical and a spiritual reality, has been morphed and uh, wrongly interpreted as being a uh, divine perspective of God in which God has already determined who's gonna be saved and who's gonna be lost. And we debunked that, that is act absolutely false doctrine. But yet this particular passage of scripture reveals to us that according as God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Well, we've been talking about creation. We've been talking about some of these deliberations and choices that God himself made before the foundations of the world. And so way back at the beginning, it was more than just God determining to divide light from dark 
and God continuing to build this incredible living environment that is known as earth. And then God creating man and woman after his own likeness and image. God already chose that there was going to be futuristically, there was going to be a church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. In fact, I would like to take my theological liberty with that and I would like to say that God built everything. God formed everything. God made choices based on this primary choice that we would be chosen in him before the foundations of the world. And so moving further back, we talk a lot about macro, we talk a lot about micro. One is you look at everything in the big picture, and one is you place it under a microscope and you, you parse it and take it apart and look at it in a small picture. But let's st step way back from the program and the plan of God and understand that God made a series of choices after first arriving at the first choice which was that I am looking for a people that have never seen me, that have never seen what the angels see, that will love me, that will come out of their present environment, that will love me for who I am, and in our case, love him for what he's done. I'm looking for a bride. I'm looking for somebody to spend eternity with. Somebody that's never seen me, somebody that's never seen me on planet earth. They've not seen any of my theophonic forms throughout the Old Testament. They've not seen teraphim, seraphims, cherubims, any of the angelic realm. And yet they believed they believed to the degree that they were willing to come out from a present environment and resist their very nature and make a choice. And so God made this incredible choice and then series of choices based on a desire. I want somebody that wants me. Something to think about, something to pray about. The most beautiful thing that you and I possess is our ability to choose. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Trust this has been a blessing to you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you then.